What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely, wonderful, lovely co-host, Julie Mitchell. How are you doing, Julie? Hey, Chief. I'm doing great. It's really good to see you today. Now, it is, it is, it is a great day for Chief Chat and it's great seeing you today. And so awesome. if it, I know one thing about, you know, my team is they, they go find the legends and bring them on the show. And so we got a, we got a legend today. He's a, he's a Swiss Army Knight. So um, he, he does he does every doggone thing. So Julie, without further ado, please introduce today's guest. A today's guest, you're right, Chief. He is a legend and a man of many, ta many talents, singer, songwriter, actor, best known for country music hits like Let Her Go, Born to Love You, and Even the Man in the Moon is Crying, his latest album, Book of My Blues, and his new single, The Son of a Gun, drop June 4th. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to country music star Mark Colley. Hey. Thank you very much. Oh, Thanks. we're so good. We're so excited you're here with us, Mark. And for everybody who's watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know what your favorite Mark song or TV show or movie is. And we will try to share your comments with him live later in the broadcast. And follow our page all summer long. We have terrific military exclusive guests coming just for you. Hey, and if you got a picture with Mark throughout the years, drop it, drop it in the comments as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's so Mark, yeah mark we appreciate you taking time for us to, uh today how you doing i'm doing great and thank you all for having me i'm very excited about having an opportunity to, to get on here and chat with y'all and uh oh. doing good you know just glad to be alive and well in the united states of america and uh to have an opportunity to share uh, some time with you guys awesome awesome so can you tell the viewers where you call calling us from and uh and let us know how you've been faring during the pandemic. Uh, well, I'm calling from uh, Naples, Florida today. I'm down here to my good friend, Bola Masters. He's down here in Naples. And he invited Tammy and I to come down for a day or two. We're enjoying it. And uh, oh, awesome. we, we have fared pretty well through the pandemic. It's been difficult for everybody and us as well. But I'm just so thankful. It seems like we've turned a corner now and, and some better and brighter days are ahead for us all. Absolutely agree with you. And we're so honored to have you with us, especially because we know that your family has this rich legacy of military service. Your dad was a World War II hero. Your brothers, John, Andy, Steve, and David all served in the armed forces. So can you talk to us a little bit about this rich legacy of service to our nation and what it has meant to your family? Well, so much pride for me. Just so proud of uh... Of, of our father and of course of my brothers. Uh, they've all served. Uh, Steve and David were Air Force and John was 101st and our baby brother Andy's uh, just retired as a colonel in the Marine Corps. So, Oh man, they hit every uh, service out, it sounds like. Yeah, we tagged, I think Andy did his first step in the Navy, so we tagged all the bases. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, and I uh, never served in uniform. That's the, one of my greatest regrets, but my health wouldn't allow that. I've been diabetic my whole life, but I uh, you know, tried to do what I can to raise hopes and morale and maybe bring a smile when I could with my guitar and a song. But uh, I guess months of what uh, we're talking about today and some of the music we're doing relates to my daddy and that generation of men and his brothers they were all uh, they were army and navy and daddy was army air corps so he made sure we knew <laughs> and uh, uh that it was air corps you know and he was in the eighth air force uh, got shot down over pluesti and uh oh, wow. survived, yeah b-24 liberator and uh he was a gunner on that plane and uh so uh, very proud of that, very proud of that history. And, uh, and, and as a family who have, are there to surround them, uh, I mean, as you know, uh, family is, uh, is where it all begins and ends, you know. And so uh, I'm proud to do what I can whenever I can. Just, you know, glad, glad we had you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, there wouldn't be, wouldn't be much country music if it weren't for our armed forces making sure that we can sing what we want to play when we can, you <laughs> know. Absolutely. Now we appreciate, uh, you know, all that you do uh, to, uh, 
you know, you're doing your part to, to, to show love and appreciation to the military. Uh, I couldn't imagine living in a household with everybody's in the military. Was, was everybody like dress right dress or did you have to make your bed up a certain way? Like, I, I'm just trying to imagine, imagine a household full of military members. Well, you know, uh, the only one that makes sure now that I make my bed is Tammy. She has to do it over every time. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, uh, no, I would, you know, I can't, from the time I was little, you know, I can't remember not having a brother in the field somewhere in a war or, or deployed somewhere around the world. And uh, so uh, I understand uh, the home front more so than I would the battlefield, but my brothers have all known it very well. And, and yeah, there's a discipline uh, that uh, my brother David is still before he left uh, for Vietnam. And uh, every time he came home, he made sure we were staying to it, me and my brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. So yeah. uh, you, you got a new album out, the, the Book of My Blues, that drops June the 4th. And so congratulations on the single, Son of <laughs> the Son of a Gun. Yeah, the son of a gun, Jonathan Hensley, my collaborator on on uh, this this album. First off, is a story is a sort of a conceptual record that all the songs were derived, selected for the telling of the story, the Rockabilly Hitman, which is a graphic novel that we're developing, and uh, all the songs sort of are, relate to that character, to our hero, our anti-hero. He's a rockabilly singer who. Uh, after work, he is an avenger of evil, you know. <laughs> he's he's kind of like a roadhouse Batman, I guess. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> but so it's a lot of fun. And, and the songs are all in, in that same collection. But uh, The Son of a Gun began with a conversation with, that John and I were having about our fathers. His father was a, was a parachute, uh, you know, a parachutist. I forget what they call them, parachute troops. In the earth at the Battle of the Bulge and many more uh, battles, and he was wounded and came home uh, from that war. And we talked about, uh, I guess he was 101st Airborne or 82nd, maybe. But we talked about growing up in a house with, with, with those veterans and, and the scars and the things that they brought home from war with them, and how they had to learn to survive that after they survived the war. They had other, uh, you know, it was, it was difficult, as you all know. And that's why I've, I have felt like that. And so we wonder, and that's where the song began. And it fit this record so well and our characters so well. We wrote The Son of a Gun. And as we were finishing the edit for the, for the, the video, Jonathan's a filmmaker. And, uh, and, and as we were finishing the edit, we were talking about our dads again and about our veterans. And we said, well, why don't we just dedicate this to our fathers and to our And and that's where it began. And now now the video is seeming to be so well received. Uh, and I'm just thankful for that because we we never can say thank you enough to you guys. But we always we thought we would thank our fathers one more time. And that's what that was about. Man, that's that's awesome that you uh, you did a tribute to your to your dad. But it also kind of talks about and, and you talked about it uh, when you were when you were describing it is that the stuff that we bring home after after the war, after whatever you're going through and you kind of keep it bottled up and caged up and you, you really don't have an outlet. So you kind of create an outlet for, for other service members to hear your song and really open up about what, they, what they've been experienced. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that, uh, that we do, Tammy and I do, and, and a lot of us in the music business are beginning to do is to uh, do music outreach and music expression, finding ways for guys and men and women to express themselves through writing, creative writing, through music or song. It's a great release. Just like when you hear a song that makes you feel better, sometimes if you've got an idea and you want to write that out, I think it's a great release. And I, and I know that music can, can be a great healer and a great helper. Sorry. It connects us, it joins us, but it can also help to heal us. And that's what, uh, and that's what we're very committed to as well. And I thank you that the, that the video is working that way. You know, it's great. Yeah, it's an excellent video and you're so right. Music does heal. It heals all wounds. And you and Jonathan, you'll be performing together at the Grand Ole Opry on June 4th. What are you most looking forward to about taking the stage that night? Well, first, let me talk a little bit about Jonathan now. Jonathan Hensley is a screenwriter. He wrote Die Hard, Con Air, 
Gone in 60 Seconds, many of your big film hits. And he's my collaborator and partner on Rockabilly Hitman. And this is the first song he's ever written. And I didn't know this, but I was, we went to see him on the set of his current film, which is The Ice Road, with Liam Neeson, which will be out this, this fall. No, it'll be out the end of this month, June 25th. Yeah. So that's where we shot the videos. He said, come up to the ice road and we'll collaborate and talk. So he said, why don't I just shoot some videos while you're here? And that's sort of how that happened. But he only been playing fiddle or violin, as he calls it, for about a year or two. Oh, so he, he wrote the song with me. Then he played on the record. And now he's coming to Nashville to join me at the Grand Ole Opry, and he's going to play on the Grand Ole Opry with me. Uh, that is so to- cool. <laughs> That's is so be, awesome. Is he going to be shaking in his boots or what? Like, I, <laughs> if that was my first time, I'd be nervous as I'll get out. Well, he is, I'm sure. You know? but I was, he's going to feel like I did the first time he cast me in a film. He cast me in The Punisher, and I played the, the assassin, the singing assassin in The Punisher. <laughs> and, and that song actually in time has been probably my most uh, played song of all my songs and it was a great song and a lot of a lot of guys in, in the military love that so the, you know the punisher he's former seal and and uh, his character in the comic and uh in time was a sort of a death valentine that i sing and i have a lot of stories that i've heard from a lot of servicemen around the world who uh, share with me uh, how important that song was to them. Man. And it's great that that song was so important that Jonathan uh, inspired me to do. And now this song, and we're going to the opera. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't played live for a crowd bigger than my living room in like a year and a half. You know? It's pretty wild to get back on stage and I'm fired up. But I mean, everybody is. And to be doing a coming out release party at the Grand Ole Opry is a, it's very exciting. I'm glad to be invited back to the opera. And uh, I'm taking John with me. He'll be a little nervous. So. I'm going to have a ball doing it. Oh, that, that, that's great. That's great. Great to hear. And uh, so so we got we got soldiers, airmen, guardians, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members joining us live today. Uh, you, can you give me some words of inspiration or hope you have for the military community? I, I know you've already showed us a lot of love so far. I just want to say thank you and want you to know how much you mean to me and so many like me and our families. Uh, you, uh, you're you in our prayers and, uh, and we love you and uh, we, we appreciate it. Uh, if it weren't for you, uh, there couldn't be uh, the country that we know and love and the freedoms we want to love. And we don't forget you. And I'm coming to see you as soon as the weather gets right. <laughs> Uh, thank you for that. That will mean that that means so much to those heroes who are who are watching with us today. And you alluded to this a little bit, but we're coming off a tough year, and you get to go back and play at the Opry and get in front of your fans again. So, what does that mean to you to have that opportunity again? It's just I thank the Lord every day that we're coming through this. It means I mean this is what I believe I've been called to do: is play and sing and entertain bring some joy, and, and then I get that instant thank you from the crowd. Uh, and to be coming back the first time out with the Grand Ole Opry, it's just, I, I don't really have words to, to say thanks, you know. Awesome, awesome. So so I heard you were, you also were awarded the American Spirit Award. And so did, did who gave that to you? Was that from the Air Force or? Air Force, yeah. Air Force, yeah. I was, uh, during the Bosnian War, this was, back during that conflict and uh, I had heard that there was no way to get music over to our men and women over there and the troops couldn't get any music and uh, and we were talking about it uh, and I, and it, Aaron Tiffin got in touch with me you know Aaron you know got to stand for something oh yeah and he had to stand for something and uh, they asked if we could do something so we uh, ask all the folks in Nashville, all the record labels to contribute music, CDs or you know cassettes at the time, I guess. And we loaded up a 141 full of music. Oh, wow. And flew it over there and gave it away to everybody. And uh, then later I, I was able to travel over with my guitar at a USO show. And Lisa Stewart, we went over and performed for them. And, uh, and later, uh, I guess, 
I didn't know, but then later I was in, got in touch with, and they gave me that. What an honor. Uh, I have no words to even say thank you for that. It's uh, I'm humbled by that and uh, very proud of it. So I can I can kind of go back to when I was deployed. I know uh, this was probably a while back, a while a while ago when you, when you did that. But um, when I'm deployed and, and we get these care packages from random people throughout the country that send stuff to us, man, we get so excited about it. You know, we they send us crystal light packages and 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 uh, beef jerky and and get all this stuff. And man, it it, it really it really hits us. Uh, in our in the fields, right when we when we get to open these, packages. So I, I can imagine, you know, all these different artists putting their music in in a care packet on on a plane, sending it over, and uh, we, we get a chance to do that. So that that you know, I just took that visual, and I was like, man, I know they probably really really. It it was awesome, and uh, and it was so well received, and um, and it took a lot of people to do that. And, and I, while I received the award, I shared it with Aaron and everybody else who used to it. It was part of that, you know. So uh, I really, I really feel like they should, they deserve a great deal of credit. Like you say, all the artists and record labels who gave us, uh, gave us their time and, and their music. Absolutely. And you've also played for the troops live through various USO shows around the world. What are your, some of your favorite memories from those tours? Yeah, you know, I saw that question, and most of my all of my memories are great, and they're unique. They're unique. Some of them are more unique than others. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we played for some ships in the Sixth Fleet at, at sea, and uh, I remember not all of my band members have got had their sea legs. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> and, and, uh, Especially my drummer, you know, we, he had a difficult time. He had a difficult time just flying on the Chinook out there, you know. He, yeah. He, oh yeah, yeah. He shouldn't have eaten breakfast that day. No, but, no. You got, you got to have a you got to you got to have a good stomach on, on some of those rides because uh, they they take you they dip you really really fast. You know, those and, flat landings are, are no joke. I would say I would if I had to make a list of all the places I'm going to play, they're all at the top of my list from the Orient to. To the Middle East uh, and uh, Europe, but uh, I wouldn't want to play Thule in winter again if I didn't have to. <laughs> Thule. <laughs> Thule in <the> winter. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Thule in winter is not my favorite place to go for a stroll. You might say. Yeah, no, you got to be, you got to be strategic. You got to be strategic with certain locations in in the military because uh, uh, Thule is definitely a summertime a summertime <laughs> visit. Yeah. I think that's and, your next hit is Thule in Winter. You should you should go off that for your next country song. Yeah, write a song. There you go. If you haven't seen Thule in Winter, don't feel bad because nobody else has either. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot to see. I, I was going to tell you that uh, we've got some announcements that are coming. Uh, I'm partnering up with my partners in crime at Crosley Brands, and we're going to be doing some things to honor the troops throughout the summer, throughout the year. And we have a, a, a lot greater announcement. So when we get all that together with my partner, Bo Lamassis, we'll come back and tell you about it. But they make some of the best uh, vinyl players, and cheap boxes, and record players, and things. It's all about music with us and uh, and doing something for our heroes throughout the USA. Man, uh, like I say, you, 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 uh, we're we gonna give you a uniform. You, 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 <laughs> we, you don't even have to go through basic training, man. We're gonna get you a uniform. <laughs> we're gonna make you an honorary chief. Well, thank you for that, and uh, you know, uh, I think I'll leave. I'll let you guys wear the uniforms. I'll wear the guitar. <laughs> you, you hold the gun. You, you guys hold the guns. I'll, hold, I'll sing the songs. You know? <laughs> well, thank I mean, you. Thank so you for that. Kind of transitioning into my next question. You talked about you. Uh, you did some acting, and you were the Punisher, and it looked like you can. You can. But you can sing and kill people at the same time. So you've already had uh, experience. Experience in that. So um, you you done the Punisher, you done a TV series in Nashville, and, and more. So yeah. tell us about how did you get into acting? How did that? Because this is your this is the Swiss Army knife in you right now. Well, the the film thing sort of came. Uh, it evolved through a conversation with with my hero Johnny Cash, and uh, John and June. I mean, I opened for John in New York, like I think nine months. I wonder. Uh, June said. 
came backstage and of course you know say three words you know and she said uh, john's gonna come in here in a minute he's gonna ask you something just say yes he came in and said they're gonna make my movie i want you to play me i said yes (laughs) but i said i don't know if i can I said, I don't know much about acting. He said, well, go get some acting practice, you know. I said, I would say, so I began to pursue film. They thought I could do it. And uh, and I, uh, uh, my first major film role was uh, Fire Down Below with Steven Seagal. And uh, he, he threw me around like a rag doll. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was dumb enough to think I could do my own stuff. Oh, so, wow. So, oh, no. I, oh, <laughs> Well, I didn't, I, I didn't know how much I was actually going to be in this movie. So anytime the camera was rolling, it was from the scene, I would say, okay, sure, I can do it. But uh, it's a little hard getting up on my door. That's only been, you know, two, decades ago. But Stephen got me in the film business, and I have to thank him for that. We did a couple films together. I always play the bad guy. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're sort of evolved playing heavies, you know. I used to say I've been beat up or shot at by most of the top leading men in Hollywood. Chuck Norris beat me, not shot me off a horse one time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so I've, uh, they said, how, so how did you learn about acting? I said, well, I just, I, I, I learned how to fall down when I was a kid, you know, every time I got my ass oh, whipped. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I, I just applied that to the film business, you know. Oh, man, that, those are some awesome stories. Uh, mm-hmm. And so you, you talked about Johnny Cash being your hero. And you got a chance to uh, kind of, you know, play him in a movie. So, uh, yeah. who can you can you tell us who um, who has influenced you the most? Maybe in music and acting. And uh, who would you like to share the stage with or the screen with at some point, if you haven't already? Johnny Cash had the greatest impact on my life as a writer, and as a performer, and as just a great human being. I mean, he was just uh, I cannot say enough good things about him. And he and June, uh, from the from the time I first began to have a little success, were so kind to me, and uh, I got a lot of great advice from him, and support, you know, just that validation. But his music inspired me before I ever knew I would know him. You know, his songs took me places, took me home when I was away, and took me away when I was home, and uh, that's what I hope that our songs do. Now they gave me comfort and entertainment. And that's what I hope they do for our men and women, our heroes today. And uh, my, the, what I hope my songs can do in some way. Who would I like to share the screen with? I've never had a scene uh, with Billy Bob Thornton. And, you know, he he and I wrote the new single that's coming out, Book of My Blues, the title track to the album. Oh, wow. Yeah, Billy Bob actually wrote that with me. And uh, he and I haven't done a scene. Uh, I'd like to do a conversation with him or Robert Duvall. Uh, and I shared the stage with most of my heroes, I guess, all of them, really. Uh, so I'm blessed in that way. Who would I like to share the stage with? Uh, I guess whoever's next, you know. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe well, the three of us could do a song for somebody somewhere, you know. I bet the folks that watch this show would like to hear y'all sing one with us. <laughs> hey, well... Julie's a much better singer than I am. I can tell you that. Oh, no. Chief, number one, <laughs> Chief does a mean Purple Rain. That's his go-to karaoke. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear me sing, so. <laughs> yeah. So so hopefully hopefully, if, uh, if you get a chance to uh, do a movie with Billy Bob Thornton, he doesn't shoot you off a horse or <laughs> then kick you back in the movie. Yeah. So we, we want to give you a different role this time. Yeah, I want to play a, ni- I want to play a nice guy. Actually, on Nashville, uh, when I got that script, uh, Tammy, my wife, said, oh, I've been reading the script before I got home. She said, it's so good. You're going to be a good guy. And, uh, <laughs> and I was a good guy for about, you know, 10 or 12 episodes. Then I went to becoming a good guy. And, I but, loved you on that show. That was a great, was, I loved that show. You were so good on that show um, as a Deacon Charles Sober Hilton. sponsor. Yeah, so good. <laughs> Charles Hudson made me look good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the one thing I want to talk about is uh, we talked a little bit about my daddy and uh, the 8th Air Force and coming up on the 27th, I guess it's the 27th, uh, this coming up Thursday, I'll be taking part in that memorial for uh, for those guys. And, and I wanted to 
give a shout out to those guys over there in the Eighth Air Force Museum for and Air Force Museum for all they did for the for those heroes. Uh, that's awesome, awesome. And so um, we have you, so you're going to be singing the national anthem. Was that next week? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, man, that's that's awesome, man. Uh, like I said, every every time I hear the national anthem, it still kind of get it gives me chills. Um, so and and hearing your voice just talking to you, you can just talk to people and know that they can sing, right? And so you have one of those voices where you just you just notice you just notice doing the thing just by talking. Well, singing the national anthem is a uh, is not the easiest thing I've ever tried to do. <laughs> I sang the anthem at a UT Vanderbilt game one year, and uh, I was so relieved when I got through with it because everybody sang along and applauded, and I was running up the stands to my seat. And this older gentleman, they had on a veteran's cap, grabbed me and he said, good shot at it, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Bless but your I heart. Said, <laughs> I'm going to take you forever, <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway. Oh, man. That's funny. But yeah, the record uh, comes out. I want to remind you that it's coming out on June 4th, and it'll be available on all the places you can look for it at crosleybrands.com and all the places you can find wherever Mark Colley is sold, you can find it. And uh, I just want to say that we're coming, around, we're going to try to get out and tour and get around the country as soon as possible. That's great. Uh, America Tammy needs that. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, I was just going to say that. So just know that we're coming to see you as soon as we can. You know, And I'm bringing my guitar. And Tammy's bringing me, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, America needs um, music. You mentioned the healing power of music. And after what the country's been through the last 14, 15 months, we need you back on stage. We need to hear your music. Perfect timing with your, your new album to get back out there and start touching lives again, um, you know, in, in person. So really, really looking forward to, to having you back on the road. That's great. Um, I do want to pause and share some of the comments from our live feed. Um, we have people watching from all over the world. So I'm going to read from my phone and share some of the comments with you. Uh, we have Mamet is uh, watching. He says, hi. Uh, Noah Abasta says, good evening from Germany. <laughs> and so you're getting worldwide reach here. Um, Mary Jo Gray Klumpka says, Mark, you're the best. Love seeing you and meeting you in Wheeling, West Virginia, WWVA and Jamboree in the Hills. So oh, yeah. she's clearly a fan. Um, Marie Kenmer says, howdy from Benbrook, Texas. And Haley Mitchell, she says, Mark is my cousin. Hey, Mark, from your Oklahoma cousin. So your cousin <laughs> Haley is watching with us. And I believe that we asked Haley if she had any uh, funny stories she could share about you. And Haley says, I don't really have a funny one, but I can tell you one of the best times when I was five years old and Mark was playing in Duncan, Oklahoma. And all I wanted was for him to put me on stage. And he did and turned me loose singing in front of a crowd. Best time ever. He has a heart of gold and loves to make people smile. So that is from, that's from your cousin. Um, and then Mary Jo also says at the Jamboree in the Hills near Wheeling, West Virginia, he and Mark Chestnut were waving to us through the barn window and she loved it. And they, it's like they were watching the crowd of thousands and enjoying every minute of it. So you have certainly touched, you've been touching lives um, through your music and through your heart of gold. So we love it. Thank you. Thank you. That was so, great. Mark, and besides your new album and song, uh, what else is on the horizon for you? Well, I can say we're going to do some. Uh, we're going to come. We're going to be coming across America, and uh, we're uh, you know we're going to come see you. And we're going to be partnering with Causley and uh, try to do some things to bring some joy and, and, and happiness to people. Uh, and you know we're going to get the band back together too uh, as soon as the festivals kick in, and. Uh, and uh, promoting this book of my blues and rockabilly hitman and all the things that go with it, you know. 
That's right? great. It sounds that like you have right. great stuff coming up. That's exciting. It's exciting to be busy and have things to look forward to. Um, I think that's what's been so hard about the last year is like nothing to look forward to. Everything's canceled. So I'm so glad that you have good things on the horizon. You're such a good person and it's it's exciting times to have something to look forward to again. Um, yep. and, and then if you're, if you're coming to Dallas, let us know. Oh, I'll, I'll be hollering at you. Please do. We'd love to come meet you in person and and, and talk with you ag again um, in a live environment for the troops. And oh, we well, well, got your phone numbers now. We know how to find you. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're easily findable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. And before we say goodbye, can you remind our viewers once again where they can go to follow you and to keep up with what you're working on? Well, you can go to markholly.com uh, or all the Twitters and the Facebooks and uh, all the different places that I have. And uh, and uh, Crosley, Crosley just told me that the new album's moving really good, so we want everybody to get one. So y'all get out there and get the, get the new record. And I hope that it'll bring you some entertainment and some joy. And I hope that this, this, that this new video, The Son of a Gun, will will uh, be well received and uh, bring some comfort and some good, so uh, warm feelings. Uh, I just love America and I love our men and women. And I love you guys. And uh, I want you to know that we appreciate it. And uh, I can't say thank you enough. Uh, and, and we'll see you soon, I hope. Absolutely, absolutely. So Mark, I just want to thank you again for joining us today. Um, I know you have a rich, like I said, thank you thank your, your family for their service uh, to this great nation. I appreciate all the, all the outreach and all the things that you've done for the military specifically. All, also while raising awareness about uh, type one diabetes as well, or diabetes in general. So you, yeah. you're doing a, a lot of things to help a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. And we, we appreciate you, we love you, we support you. Uh, having you with us means a lot to all of our service members throughout the world. Uh, and we wish you all the best with the new album and the single. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, we, we're gonna wrap wrap up the interview. Is uh, if you can if you can hold on uh, after the live to get some information from you. But like I said, thank you again. And uh, Chief Chat out. Chief Chat out. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>